thoughts when they're writing. So I would say it's um, sometimes half men, half women. Usually it's about you know um, you know sixty percent women, but uh, usually I have men in the class too. Uh, you know what I find is very interesting. Yeah, I would yeah. be interested to know about um, you in terms of your classes and feedback that you get. It seems like the younger male today is much more sympathetic, yeah. more empathetic, <laughs> is more in tune. I don't know if it's because they've been raised by mothers that work and do all these other things and they, they've they had to take more responsibility at home and that kind of thing. But I find a young man today is much more, to, I mean, I, I actually see a lot of men uh, walking down the street or uh, on uh, where I go into hotels and so forth. And they're the ones that are uh, have the baby pack strapped to them, not the woman. They're the ones that are pushing the baby carriages, which I loved. I mean, my husband was like that, but he was like an anomaly. Mm -hmm. he, he was before his yeah. time. And uh, uh -huh. I just wondered if you've seen a difference in the men uh, who are younger today as to uh, what they used to be. Yeah, they're totally into it. Um, however, when you start talking to the men who are in another category of age, you find out that they, as grandfathers, are into it, and they wish that they had done more when they were younger too. And um, and and as I said, you know, they still have those those deep feelings. And I think the mothers of the '60s and '70s and '80s, you know, um, brought their kids up a certain way so that they would enjoy being um, a parent more. If that makes well, that's sense. That's true. That's true. I mean, I I totally get that. I mean. People, men who are grandfathers, well, even grandmothers today say, oh, it's wonderful because you can send them home again. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. the, the grandfathers, uh, they do. They love being grandfathers. And, of course, they were raised at a time where they had to bring home the bacon, so to speak. And, um, uh, yeah, because I know that when I first went into business, I've been in business you know, over 50 years. And when I first went into business, there were really no other women in business. I was really another anomaly in my family. And so yeah. uh, I think that uh, I think it's a great thing that's happening with the younger males of today. And I'm glad to see that the grandparents, uh, the men are coming forward and saying, you know, I really wish I had experienced this. And so they're experiencing it vicariously through mm -hmm. their grandchildren. So what other things have you discovered um, by the readers of your book? As far as uh, what? Well, what they love about it, um, what they get from it, um, how they respond to it. Well, they they like they like hearing me read the poems aloud, and so you know I'm happy to to accommodate and do that in different places. Um, but then people like to take the book home too. <laughs> so well, of course, know, they, that's what they, you they want. Like you it. want them to buy the book and take it home. But I think it's yeah, very they like to review it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they, they want to hear you read the poem. Do you think it's because they get more meaning from you reading it and then they can interpret it later on when they take it home? Or, uh, yeah, why is that? Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with it, but um, I've been doing, I've been involved in critique groups for 20 some years. And, you know, you have to know who your audience is. And I try to write for a general audience you know, as well as, you know, specifically, uh, and it's not just for women, you know, I'm trying to write about people's feelings and, and bring out the feelings that we have all gone through. So I think that what it is is people identify um, with, once they get over the fact that it's poetry, you know, of course, there's so many people who love poetry, but the people who don't, once they start reading it and, you know, they, they kind of enjoy it too. So, um, I think that has a lot to do with it, just identifying you know, with the word, with what I have been through, they have been through it also. Well, there's all kinds of poetry also. I mean, there's poetry that kind of flows, and there's poetry that rhymes, and there's poetry that that um, uh, tells a greater story than something else. So there's all forms of poetry. How did mm -hmm. you start it writing? How, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. How did you get started writing? Oh, believe it or not, I was eight years old when I 
started writing and I had a cat <laughs> and I, you know, writers just can't help themselves. I, I was eight years old. I was able to write and I started writing about my cat and my mother and father encouraged me and they collected all the things I wrote and put them in a notebook. And, and then my teachers encouraged me also. So encouragement goes a long way. We all have to do it for our kids and for each other. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, I love the fact yeah. you've got a cat. I've got two cats and um, I love them. And that's the one I was saying to someone else uh, that I, I did a lot of writing in my early years, which I can't find anymore. I don't know where it's gone or, you know, if it was the stuff that my mother gave away or whatever. But the one thing I remember writing about was my cat and the velvet nose and the velvet ears. That's what I remember. Oh, yeah. You know? um, and yeah. And to this day, when I stroke my cats, I always stroke their ears and their nose because to me it's like velvet, you know. So yeah, uh, you're using your senses. That's and, right. <laughs> you know, which we like to do in our writing classes. We try to encourage everyone to use their senses and you know to write about that velvet nose or that my cat is black and that rhymes with cat. You know. <laughs> so that that um, that you know. So how do you teach people? I mean, I can see uh, uh, teaching them to write a story, but how do you teach them to write poetry? Well, for instance, um, on my website, I have a photograph because I'm also a hobby photographer, and it's called um, Alligator Duck because I looked at the clouds one day, and believe it or not, they looked like an alligator was chasing a duck. So I said to myself, this is what happens. This is... Um, it just comes to me, you know, this would be a great prompt. You know, somebody could look into the sky and see what they see and start writing about it. So, you know, I put a, the words together to give people a, a worthwhile prompt. And, you know, they, um, I encourage them and they ask me questions if they need to. And so I would say something like, um, you look up into the sky, you know, what do you see? And then I have maybe the entire group call out all the words and everybody can jot them down. And then um, I can give them a sentence um, or a line from a poem and say, you know, take this line and use this as your first line. So they may use the line from a poem as their first line or any line you know, that's in the poem as their first line. And then use the words that they have um, lean from looking at the clouds in the sky and then um, in the end I'll say now let's change the the poet's sentence or phrase or line to your own and by the time we go through all of that they're able to do that and and they start writing their own prose piece or poem and there's always really, I mean, I'd say 90% of every class is really happy to share whatever they've written. And so many of them are fantastic. You know, they really, they really get it by the time we get through the whole prompt. Does that that's, make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's fantastic. So yeah. um, if people wanted to know how to get a hold of you, uh, Kara, what is the best way to reach you? Do you want people to go to your website? Do you want people to... Um, uh, go to email? I mean, how would you want people to find out about you and what you've written and all the other things that you're doing? The best way right now um, is either through Facebook under Kara Nusinov. We better give them that. You spell it. It's N-U-S-I-N-O-V. Kara with a C. Uh -huh. C-A-R-A. C -A -R -A. Yes. Nusinov. C -A -R -A. Okay. Nusinov, N like Nancy, U, S like Sam, I, N like Nancy, O, V like Victory. And that's also the name of my website. It's karanusinovwriter.com. Fabulous. So they can, yeah, so um, that's the best way. I think Facebook is probably, you know, either text, um, send me a message through Facebook or just write on my page. And, um, uh, and you know, eventually I will have more information on my page. And so we have about uh, two minutes left. What have we mm -hmm. not asked Kara that you would like the public to know? Well, um, 
I could read you part of my poem, The First French Kisses, so okay. you'll know about that. We have, <laughs> all right, we, got, we have just a minute. So if you can do some part of it in a minute, go ahead. Okay, I'll read the first part. One day I was an ordinary girl, and the next I knew how to French kiss. One tender teenage smooch mining for gold and hitting a vein started explorations like Lewis and Clark mapping out territories which beg to be discovered. So that's the first. I love it. Oh friendship. my gosh, that's so that is so visual and so beautiful. I just love so, that. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, and then I love to laugh. Come to my classes to laugh and to write. That's basically you know what I like to do. That's great. That's wow. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So remember, you can go to karanusinoffwriter.com or go to her Facebook page, which is Kara Nusinoff. Thanks so much for being with us today, Kara. We really enjoyed it. Thank you. I enjoyed it so much. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. I choose my guests carefully, so if you have someone you'd like me to interview, please drop me a line at gailcarson13 at gmail.com. In the meantime, check out my intro program, Mindset Matters, at www.sobmindset.com. See you next week.